All right, welcome to another video from the Chart Readers. On a personal side, I had a very hectic 48 hours, but I am so happy to say my mom did survive her heart surgery. So things are a lot better, they're calming down, and um, yeah, gonna keep making my regular video. So uh, all things are good here. Um, today though, we are gonna be looking at the EV and charging sector. You can see it with this first one, right? Real nice chart right here. I'm expecting to see a lot of real nice charts because I mean, NASDAQ just did a monster move, right? So before we get into it, what are we gonna do? Same thing we always do, right? We're gonna look at the daily and the weekly to see what's setting up. We have our five moving averages. There are a bunch, so there's a real good chance I'm gonna delete some and make new um, horizontal support and resistance lines and then when we're done we will use the MACD and RSI you know what I lied we're gonna actually start with the MACD and RSI look at these this is really nice to see right obviously it kind of did start here but this is what I like okay it's still a little choppy it's still a little tight you know this right here is such a nice takeoff it, it really makes me think good things are gonna happen. Obviously more reason to be happy is up here, but that's a real nice RSI. I love it when that thing slopes up and the red, which again, we, we don't like the red line. It's looking like it wants to stay down here, right? While this goes up, so that is great. But again, 80% of the work is up here, so let's get up here. Um, first things first is look at this, right? So. Um, there were a couple, it was really choppy on this eight, right? So obviously we lose the eight, try to get back up. We lose the eight, we get over, stay over, but not good confirmation, right? Cause again, it closes under the day before, you know, this right here was nice though. Cause again, now we do have three good days, but really even with these, nothing's really screaming. This is about to happen, right? Day after, again, this is not a good confirmation candle that I like, right? We're roughly at half 50% candle, right? So I mean, um, nonetheless, we are one, two, three, four days up. Today really came for two reasons. Number one, just starting on the NASDAQ, okay? So NASDAQ composite. NASDAQ looked like it was gonna drop, but it was able to bounce and then just make a monster move. Again, I've said it a bunch of times, 4% for NASDAQ is, is almost equivalent to 40%, you know? That thing should be around half percent up, half percent down. So monster, monster day on the NASDAQ, and that's gonna translate here, right? But look, we've definitely given good confirmation of this eight break. We're now over the 20, and I mean, look, it's been a long time since we've really definitively gotten over the 20, right? There was this little moment right here, but again, this 230 line kind of stopped it. And really there was never just as monstrous as this looks of a candle, right? So um, really overall, I will say this is actually my favorite shape of a candle too. I love it when the top, like literally the high of the day is, is also the close of the day. So it actually went to 76 cents and we closed at 70 cents, right? You can kind of see it in the box right there, but it looked like literally once things are good, people could not stop buying. There was not enough shares, right? People wanted more and more and I like that. So this does really make me believe tomorrow will be good. How do we look against this? Okay, cool. If we can get over 196, we'll even call it 196 and five, this is a good little gap fill, right? because really the next stop here will be around there. So um, let's take a look at the weekly. I think, yeah, let's make a couple new lines. Let's go ahead and delete our drawings for Tesla. Damn, this one had 19, right? So you can see how, uh, how much I look at Tesla actually, but we'll put one up here. I will put one right there. And let's zoom out a little bit. These are a little far out. I don't want to actually use those ones. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm, I'm gonna use the top of this one, not the bottom of that one. Cool, okay. Oh, nice, and it also hits right there. Perfect, I like that. That's a good one, two, three from the weekly. Um, I am gonna put this one, cause again, we did just talk about it and this one's gonna be a pretty immediate one to break. But yeah, I like this, cause between our lines and the moving averages, we're gonna get to this top one right here at 272, right? So this is pretty, look, if you have no money in Tesla, I would wait for this line to break, this 196.25, 26, whatever you wanna call it, 30, and then, hey, take a good ride, more than likely to this 50 up here at the 120, give or take, 119, right? But 
Um, yeah, that's about a 10% gap right there if it fills. There might be a little bit of a slowdown at 205. I could see 205 maybe getting a little noisy, but again, if we can break the the orange, I always say, right, this is, this is why we love the moving averages. Once you break this, you go to this. Once you break that, you go to that, and so on and so forth, right? So things are looking good. Make sure you watch the NASDAQ in the morning, but yeah, I mean, NASDAQ does well. You know these will be doing well. Ford, so check it out. Ford again. I've been I've been screaming the praises of Ford, right? There's nothing better than I love than a good riding of the eight up, right? And that's literally what it did right there. You know, it started looking like things were gonna actually drop. I was a little worried from these days, right? But actually never got under the hundred, which is really nice. You can actually see the hundred holding it. And look, where are we? We're in a cluster of four, right? We got four lines, the fifth one's right here, and we're just going tight, going tight, getting really horizontal. We're either gonna pop up and continue flying or hey, we might drop down to this red one. Um, but again, I always say it, anything can really happen when you start going horizontal in a cluster, especially if you got four out of five, right? But liking the MACD, it's definitely reset itself down to a good little place, but really it's actually gotten pretty horizontal with it, right? It did a nice climb during this climb, but it's definitely, you know, topped out so if it wants to break the 200 there is a good run to make and just to zoom out again you can see it it's been pretty long since we've actually been anywhere near the 200 right almost almost a year yeah look at that right so um at least a little more than half a year so that 200 will matter if we can get over it so but one more time one of two things will happen we'll either break the 200 and climb we'll lose the 100 and probably drop down to this like 13 range around the the 50. Um, but yeah, again, if if the NASDAQ looks good, we've at least been able to kind of recoup a lot of these. And look, there was a point in the day before Powell probably made his, uh, his interest rate comments where people thought it was going to drop. Because like I said, I was getting worried. We were under the eight couple days and it, it just, you know. But yeah, NASDAQ does well. It's going to make this sector specifically do that well, right? So... Um, yeah, hey, look, we're, we're at least over the eight still on the weekly. I'd love to close over the 20. That would be really nice to do on the weekly. Because again, when the weekly does well, you're gonna have a bunch of good dailies, right? So um, let's not lose the 20 by Friday. What's the 20 at? Let's close over 14. It's actually at 1392, but let's just round to 14. That would make us pretty happy actually for Ford. Mullen, M-U-L-N. So this makes me upset. Okay, first and foremost, again, there is no reason to buy this stock. It just has struggled to get over the eight, right? So there's there's really no reason why you would have lost your 4%, 5% today, right? Because again, you should have not been in here, as I've been saying the last week and the week before, right? And again, you can see why. Once we lost this 24 line, it just, it, it gets ugly. It is what it is, right? And I know it doesn't look like a lot from 24 cents to 19, but every two cents is roughly 10%, right? So you got 20 between the 24 and 20, and then another 5% right there. You just drop 25%, though it only looks like, what, six cents, five cents, right? So um, again, looks like pennies, but that shit adds up when you look at it percent-wise. Nonetheless, what really does bother me is, again, let me go back to it real quick, right? We can even look at QQQ, right, instead of NASDAQ itself. When you get a 4% day on NASDAQ or on QQQ, and you can't even scrape a positive point whatever, that's bad. That That is not a good thing, right? Now, granted, it definitely wanted to hit 18, but decided at least close near 19. I'll take that, that's definitely a positive thing. But the fact that this was not even a fractional percent of green, it just goes to show you what happens when you lose important lines, and I'm gonna zoom out, and when you fall into all-time lows. Right, I mean, I'm telling you, I, I literally call all-time lows a black hole for a reason because it, it just drags you and it, it, it's, and you can see it, right? Once we lost that candle, it, 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 we fell into all-time lows. I understand that that little point right there actually was it, but I promise you the candle body is why we focus on things and it, it, it happens for reasons, right? I'm not making this stuff up, but um, yeah, Mullen. Again, it's just, this is the problem with all-time lows. Look, I'll tell you, 
if this can get over 33 cents, I would love to swing that up to the blue line, right? Honestly, I, I don't even know if I would touch this if it got over the eight. Now, you know, there's decent jumps. There's at least some decent gaps. So, hey, maybe it gets over the eight, then it'll pause at 24, then do this, then pause here. And, you know, that I guess I'd be okay with. But just in terms of putting my money for something long, I mean, there's, there's so much this thing needs to do. And just looking out, you can kind of see it's the 50, right? Ha it, there was an attempt here, definitely a bad fail, a little bit of an attempt, almost hit that 100 right there too. Definitely a little bit right here. Like this 50 is what we've seen the 20 do to a lot of people, right? And it's still not even really over the 20 that much. They've, they've kind of been running pretty parallel. So again, Mullen, I know there is a very passionate investor group in this, right? And I'm not here to bash the stock by any means, but you can do a lot with these moving averages, like ride it up when it breaks it, make that good money, make that good money. Oh man, we're about to lose it. Oh, we actually gapped down and lost two in one day. You shouldn't, this would have been truly the last day you should have held it. And it would have been around 40 cents. And literally, if you sold that 40 cents with that exact same amount of money, you could have doubled it today, right? And it's actually, you could have gotten a little bit more than double. And in all honesty, this thing might still go down until it really tells me I'm getting back over the eight, right? So again, that's why I, I promise you, I used to be one of those passionate investors before I knew what any of these silly little lines meant, right? But once you know they're not silly little lines, they're actually these like magical tools that make you a little more methodical than you would have been otherwise, man, your game will change, I promise you that. But Mullen, in all honesty, I wouldn't touch it until 33 cents. Because look, from there, that's almost a 50% jump to 55, right? I'm kind of rounding, I'm making this 30 and I'm making this 60, but hey, 33 to 55 cents in a nice safe, you know, that's way better than like dancing with these and like hoping you're gonna break this and you know what I mean? Like, again, different styles, there's so many different trading strategies that will make you money. This is just my personal one, right? LIDR, LIDR, man, what happened here? Oh, that sucks. Again, so look, you get no breaks, right? This one right here is a break of three lines, okay? You know on one line I need good confirmation. If you're gonna break three lines on a single candle, I need my confirmation up here. And I need a full, good, heavy candle that says, hey, we've broken all three, I'm gonna buy that break and we're going, right? Instead, we drop here, hey, I'm glad this line helped, but already you know that's not a good confirmation. Kind of a doji, not a super skinny middle, but nonetheless, you have almost almost exact wick sizes up and down, right? So, and again, the next day was that harder confirmation. So, and then again, what I don't like is LIDAR. We have a monster NASDAQ day, but you still have a negative two, right? Why would you do that? You know, at least take back 50% of yesterday's bad day if you're gonna, you know, at least if you're gonna make it red, right? At least put it up here, I guess is kind of what I was trying to say. So, um, really disappointing right here, actually. Um, again, we're actually under the eight right now, which is not a good thing. And look, we had a big, big week last week, not good confirmation this week, right? So um, again, confirmation matters. Look, it's middle of the week, right? So there's there's only two days left, but um, yeah, I'm a little worried about LIDAR, LIDAR holding right there. Okay, EV go, good for you. Hey, I like this. Okay, again, I for sure need confirmation, you know that, but look, we were well under the eight, okay? Well under the eight. And a good jump up, good RSI forming. Are we over this peak right here? Let me kind of try to line that up. That RSI, look, let me just do it that way. Wow, sorry. So this RSI was at 55, 71. We're at 48. Okay, so one of two things. Either we can go from up, up from, wow, my, I'm not speaking well. We can either go up from 48 to about 55, peak of this, but hey, even if we do that, I think that would probably take us up to the, the 20 right here. Not quite a 10% gap, but it's most of it, right? Because uh, 60 cents would be your, um, would be your, and then we're just under there. Yeah, that's again, that's a little bit more than 5%, that's for sure. So 
Um, this, if it opens above, literally a penny over, I would probably ride that thing right there. I will, uh, you know what I'll even do? Let's do this. I haven't done this in a good while. Let's set an alert for EVgo crossing this line. Um, I have my settings. Again, I'm not going to hit edit because you'll see my phone number, but I get a text message as well as an email. My wife hates it because I live on the West Coast and I get 6.30 um, text messages sometimes. But hey, if it makes money, you know, I'm getting out of bed. That's for sure. So Evie Go, I'm going to see what it can do tomorrow. Again, this is not a good weekly. So if money's made, I always say bank it, right? Because it will be a sustainable gain if this was over the line, right? That said, hey, the, these two bad weeks is a kind of a baby gap fill too. So maybe it will come up to, what is that, 722, right? And then what does 722 look like around here? Yeah, nice, that's even actually a little higher than, than this. So again, EVgo looks interesting tomorrow for sure. But again, weekly is not screaming sustainable. So Neo, okay, I gotta close my door. My wife just came, give me one second, sorry. Neo had a monster, monster day. And this actually started before Powell came and before the NASDAQ turned on. So when I, I woke up to this 20 banger, I was actually really surprised. And then I really noticed a lot of Chinese tickers, not even in this industry. I'm actually going to add one more after this, but a number of Chinese stocks flew today. Okay. And look, I've made money on Chinese stocks that I have no idea what they do. I just, you know, it's it's one of those things where like that that region runs. I don't know why, but just make sure you have your finger on the mouse because I'm telling you, the rug can get pulled very quickly, okay? That's that's just really really again, I'll be honest, I've made money on them. I'm I'm not going to say don't buy them, but they turn very quickly, okay? That said, this is a real monster setup, right? I obviously want to zoom out to see what the rest looks like, but beautiful MACD, a gorgeous RSI that already cracked that peak right there. And this thing's only at 70. We can at least go to 75, 76, even 77 before I start worrying, right? You know, around 80, I'm going to start kind of ringing that bell. But I love that we broke the line. I am glad that we actually were above the 20 and the 8 the day before. It's not a good candle, but again, that closed at 1050. And um, yeah, the orange was at 46, and then the green was at 32, right? So definitely did its job here, and then a pretty monster day today. Let me just zoom out a bit. So look, this 50 hasn't even been touched for a long time, okay? If this thing makes a move, this thing might go to the 100, because at this point, we've crossed this and we're starting to go against this, right? And this down makes for an easy up, okay? I'm zooming out a bit just to see, okay, there is some past history in here. That's actually where this line probably came from, right? But um, interesting. No, nonetheless, look, this still looks really bullish. I'm going to go ahead and delete my lines and we're going to actually get a couple more just immediate ones so we know what the the immediate ones look like. But yeah, look at that. I love it, right? That for sure is going to be a line that I would draw and we smash through that, right? And now we have just a beautiful weekly gap to fill. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Let's put one right there. Yeah, I'm going to go with that one. Let's put one right there. And then look, I am going to put it right here because again, if bad things happen, this is definitely a place it can drop to. Actually, it looks like it might be a relatively healthy drop if it comes to that. Um, cool. Oh, no, it would not. I take that back. That'd be horrible if it came to this. We do not want that. So for tomorrow, look, if it goes, let's give you the exact numbers. If it drops to the 50, which is at 1236, that's still relatively healthy, okay? You'd hold the 50, you would be above 50% candle, and you should get a golden cross when the green crosses the orange, when the smaller one goes over the big one. If this opens up, okay, let's even, let's, what's this number? Oh shit, we're literally sitting right on. Let's use this one then, why not? If this crosses 1288, you know, you there's a good likelihood it's coming here. It's probably going to come to this 15. And that's a nice percent right there. That's a, that's a good little gap. Again, $2 was 20% roughly, right? So I mean, hey, 
another two dollars is pretty much where this little line is right here right and look from here to here those are your only immediate green so look let's do it one more time let's right click that bad boy let's set a price alert at 1288 for neo and let's hit okay there we go we've made two on this video let's see what happens in the morning again it's this this is an interesting weekly right by no means is it pretty hard tank an attempt up got real close and then failed but just look i'm not gonna i i am not gonna connect neo to the nasdaq pop i'm just i'm i'm my personal opinion is there are a bunch of chinese stocks that flew today and again they're either gonna fly again tomorrow i don't know if they'll sustain tomorrow but there might be some good morning pops um well worth watching overall where are we in terms of like is this worth a good hold look get over the 200 and it will be wildly smooth sailing okay i honestly if there's a little swing i'll probably play the swing but if you're looking to start a good long position and literally not have to worry wait till 1750 you know i know it sounds silly because there's a lot of profit between 12 whatever and 17 whatever but there's so much easier profit in my opinion from 1750 honestly till 24 after 24 if that breaks probably 48 hey if not let's even just call it 32 right so again just keep things in perspective but it's better to go smooth sailing up here than choppy waters of the moving averages down here so this is our new ticker for the day lee lee automotive again the same i'm zoomed out way too much sorry about that the same monster day that we saw with neo we saw here i will say that's a better day before right because again even with neo we were above them but not quite as pretty as lee was so with that i like this a little more this seems a little steeper even though it's the same 70 and this seems a lot flatter comparatively obviously that's why it looks steeper right but again i like that the macd is in, in the positive that was not the case for neo right neo still barely but it's in the negative right so um again between the two i like lee more than neo mainly for down here mainly for here as well because i like that day to day but again if this and then hold on i gotta make some lines let's go to the weekly because i'd like to see the lines before i start talking so nice it looks like we smashed that cool take that look at that just ugly weekly drop right weekly up weekly drop hopefully you know another weekly up right so we'll use that guy right there i think that's a good one two three and then I want this one. I for sure want this one. Cool. Okay. So again, if you did not buy this morning, I would wait for 1250. You can, uh, 1250, 2251, right? Get over this line, the bottom of this dude. And then hopefully should be a nice little swing to at least a hundred right here, which roughly looks like 10%. Yeah, you're a little more than two bucks actually. So hey, that's a pretty nice little 2% swing right there if it breaks. And again, I'm liking the MACD, liking the RSI. One more time, I would wait to get over the 200 for what should be a lot easier trading. But you know, I mean, Lee, I don't think, ha yeah, we're not, oh, we are actually, this has gotten, to the 40s okay interesting again if you can break this you'll have a good chance at making an attempt at breaking this and i know a lot of people are almost afraid of buying after all-time highs all-time highs is almost one of the best buys you can make okay I, I i know it sounds weird but if you can crack all-time highs you've got so much clear it, it's the opposite of all-time lows you know you have nothing stopping you up there so um yeah again could be a little choppy because of that two right there if you can get over the 200 could be great but i do like lee more than neo polestar polestar was killing it okay polestar was killing it almost lost this and then again the last two days has done really well 
it looks like that also wants to kind of go back above the, the red. Obviously, again, we do like it when green is over red. This RSI is just so high though. I mean, to me, it's really funny that it even, cause this, no, this day, I think was in the nineties, right? Yeah, that one, that day was 90 right there. I mean, again, you, you do kind of take that into perspective, right? Cause we might start making a horizontal up here, right? So, and one more, now, there is no 200 moving average. We just hit the 100 day of trading right here. So this has only been a few. From this day, we still need another 100 days before that purple dot will pop up, right? So right here, you can see that was the 50th day. 20th was a little bit off the screen and then obviously 8th as well, right? But yeah, right now we are trading over all the moving averages. We are trading above 50% candle right here. In all honesty, if this thing is positive in the morning, if this thing goes 70, sorry, 745, this could be a buy. And in all honesty, if you break 8, Oh man, you, there's so much gap. This eight is gonna be another big line and we had a doji, hard doji right there, right? So you break eight and you're gonna start making your way up to, yeah, eight, six, almost another 10%. Man, watch this bad boy in the morning. Let's go ahead and uh, not, let's set an alert. Let's do it. I like setting these alerts. I, it's really important that people set alerts. I'm telling you, you know, because even if it doesn't happen, you'll see it. This is at 44. I'm setting at 46. Again, it's all good. I don't need to be there for, you know, the lowest of the low for the more. If I can ride it, I'm more than happy making some percent, right? Don't be greedy. Just remember that. But yeah, use alerts to your advantage. Where are we on the weekly? This is still a healthy weekly, right? Definitely some moments of scariness for sure. But I like that we're over 50%. I like that we're over the 20. We still have two days left. So hopefully, hey, if it keeps going up, like we're hoping, maybe this will actually end up turning into a green candle, right? But one, two, three, four greens on the weekly will equal, that's it, really? Wow, shit, interesting. Nonetheless, it should have, I thought, equaled more, but hey, all right, whatever. Um, last, no, not last one. Oh man, I am going way too slow. All right, Nikola. Nikola was just added. Again, I was not a fan of this. It started going horizontal. Today was a big day. If we can get confirmation tomorrow under here, that's good. It'll give us a confirmation of the eight. If we actually get over this and start getting into the 20, remember, we're going to need another day confirmation to show this. But one thing that we've said before, it's good when there's spacing in between these lines, right? Because it gives you a chance to kind of do it in pairs. But this is a real low RSI that's starting to take off, right? The last couple of ones were taking off at 70. If this one can take off at 50, man, this thing might run each next day here, next day here. You know what I mean? So um, if you want a safer trade, wait to see what happens with the 50. You can basically get in at 1314 and ride that all the way up to 461. That's a real nice percentage, right? And then, hey, if you, this right here could be a wall, but once we get over that, we're gonna start going more into this downtrend fill, right? So actually, I do like Nikola set up overall. I like the spacing in between the moving averages. I like the downtrend here. Um, only a couple lines to break, actually. So Nikola does look like it might be getting ready to make a move. Okay. Definitely not un, not over the eight. That's not a good thing. Looks like RSI kind of wants to turn around. And man, this thing got real low, right? This thing's in the sixes. I want to say four might be one of the lowest ones we've seen since making the video. But um, yeah, again, this does look like it's overall wanting to make a nice little uh, nice little uptrend. Let's do it. Let's uh, set an alert. Why not? Um, I'd like to know if this thing starts starts high in the morning or not. Cool. Let's do it. All right, three more, VLDR, VLDR. Okay, interesting, where are we? We are in a line of one, in a horizontal cluster of four, right? Moments of where it wanted to lose it, moments where it wanted to break it. At this point, going super, super horizontal. Look, I, again, there's been a couple of these where like we had a good day on the NASDAQ and a couple of them just didn't move, right? So I wish everything was green on this video. I'm happy more is green than the reds that we've seen, right? We've seen a lot of tickers and I think there's only been three of them. So I'm, I'm overall okay with the sector being, you know, cohesive. But yeah, look, I will say it, right? You either 
wait for this to break the 100 and fly up or you watch it lose the the 50 and go down right i would not touch this until it falls out of the the cluster one way or the other and obviously i would not touch it if it dropped right but yeah if it breaks the 100 this thing will go up and look how far the 200 is right so i mean there's plenty plenty of room to make um a good profit if that breaks but again i'm not going to touch that Hey, that's not a bad weekly though. It's actually better weekly than most of them because this is actually over the eight, over the eight, over the eight, and over the eight. So this has been four weeks over. That's a little promising. Maybe that's a, a good sign that this will get over. But again, I'm not touching. But let's set an alert. Why not? Let me know when this thing's at. No. Oh, wait. What is this thing at? Sorry. 109. Yeah, give it to me at 110. Cool. 110. Let's set an alert when we cross above. And then this is how easy it is to make an alert, right? It's it's the easiest thing that, again, sh ooh, solo. You know, I like solo not that long ago. I think it was probably during that climb right there. So I know I was praising solo a little bit on some of my last videos. And look, big, big downtrend that really, if we open above that line, and again, we're gonna set an alert, right? What's the two, what's the 20 at 119? Give it to me at 120. Let me know if we're over 120. That's real nice because all I'm seeing is red down and green up. Again, up, down, hopefully and up, right? That would be the goal. So real, hopefully knock on wood, a good ride from 120 to one, roughly 130. That's about 10% right there, right? So hey, you gotta love 10% swings, I'm telling you. Um, ooh, what happened last week? Were we over the eight? Were we under the eight? We were on the eight last week. So I'm not a big fan of when it closes on, right? But this was over, this was over, this was over. This didn't lose it. And then this did recover back. So I like this weekly. I like this daily. If we can get over this cluster of three, because again, it is a cluster, right? We just never really traded as horizontally through it. But yeah, if we get over that, I mean, I'd like to know. Last one on the list, ChargePoint. I know a lot of people like ChargePoint. I've said this one moves a lot like Tesla, which really in itself is a big compliment, right? But there's a lot of reason to believe this might come up to here, which is now sitting at 1450 roughly, right? And that's a good little gap in between there, right? But you get good confirmation tomorrow that we've broken the 20, we'll probably come to the 50, right? Because really that's gonna be the next stop point, I would say, give or take, which is almost aligned with the 50. And then, hey, if you break that, you're coming here, right? So. Um, yeah, I definitely want to know if this opens a little bit higher tomorrow. I'm okay with 47, five cents, why not? Um, and yeah, I'd love to ride that to the 50 if it hits. So again, overall, a lot of optimism. There were a couple that I didn't like. Um, really quick, looking at the weekly, not as sustainable as ideal, right? I wish we were over the eight. So hey, maybe some profits here, bank a little bit just to be safe. But again, overall, I'm just gonna end it here, right? NASDAQ. NASDAQ wanted to fall, got bounced off of this, and then a monster move, okay? If this thing has a good day tomorrow, that's probably going to put us over the 100. If this gets over the 100, we're that much closer to the 200. And I'm telling you, it there were moments where it seemed like, and I, I made an inverse video two days ago because I thought we were going to come back down here. Instead, what we've been doing, oh man, real quick, I hate when I go too long, I do apologize. We're taking the bottom of this, we're taking the bottom of that, we hit right there, then we're now starting to make an even steeper one. I know it's not wildly steeper, but hey, hopefully, oh, I should do it from here, hopefully the next one gets even more steep, right? And again, even more, and then that's how you just get some really nice movement, right? So it all will start on NASDAQ, we have two that are pretty much China specific in my opinion. Otherwise, watch NASDAQ. Hey, I hope you're learning. Um, I feel good, I'm in a good mood. That's why I made a 30 minute video, but the rest shouldn't be this long. Hey, have a great one.